The last thing I want to tell you about the church is this. Why I think it's just good for you to be in church and make that a part of your life because Jesus is committed to his church. Jesus, the Son of God, is committed to his church. You know, the church is known as the bride of Jesus. You know, Jesus would never not be committed to his bride. Jesus told Peter in Matthew 16, he says, On this rock I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. He says, I'm going to build my church, and hell will never be able to stop it from advancing. That's commitment. Amen? He said in, 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 in Matthew 28 that I shared last week when the Great Commission, he said, he said, I am with you always till the end of the age. Is he committed to his church? I believe he is. This is why 2,000 years later we're still going strong. This is why we're still here in 3.3 billion, almost a third of, of, of the population. Christianity, the largest still and still fastest growing religion in the world Amen. Why? Because Jesus is committed to his church. And because the gates of hell cannot stop it. How many of you know you have an enemy that would love to derail your destiny? You have an enemy of your soul that would like to take you down, that would like to close off your eyes and shut down your faith and steal your hope. But how many of you know the gates of hell cannot stop the church of the living God? You can't stop the church because the church has got all of this going here. The church has a healthy sense of community. I and mean, the church is a people that's full of purpose and they're on fire for God. And the church knows the power of prayer. When all else fails, the church is one institution that will still be left standing. Why? Because Jesus is building his church. Because Jesus is committed to his church and because Jesus paid for every one of you that's a part of his church listen very carefully with his own blood in John 15 13 he says greater love has no man than this than that he laid down his life for his friends Jesus didn't just say come follow me Jesus says I'm going to pay a price to earn your loyalty I'm going to pay a price to make you mine are you listening to me there's no other, they say, oh, Jesus, he was a great philosopher and all of this stuff here, but they miss the fact that Jesus did more than that. Him and he died on the cross, not because of anything that he had done. He was the most innocent person that ever lived. And he died a death that he did not deserve. He paid a price for something that he had not committed and never the Bible says, he who knew no sin, God the Father made him who knew no sin to become sin for you. In other words, he took your place. He says, I'm guilty. I'm the murderer. I'm the molester. I'm all of the, the heinous and wicked things that we disassociate ourselves from and said, I would never do that. I would never be that. Jesus on the cross took that on himself. He says, I'll be all of that to redeem the murderer, to redeem the thief, the liar. Come on, somebody. I'll become that so you can become what I am. Holy, righteous, redeemed. Now, if I was in the right church, somebody would say amen. If I was in a right church, somebody would clap and give Jesus praise. I think I just said something right there. He shed his blood to purchase you and I. Look at somebody and tell him, you're expensive. You are expensive. This idea of being in church is not just being a member of some organization. This idea of being in church, it means it's, it's about something more transcendent, something deeper. It, it's about being purchased by God and becoming the property of God. It's about being given the name that is above every other name to identify with. It's, uh, it's, it's about your standing. You were once lost, but now you're found. You were blind, but now you can see. It's about a story of amazing grace. Come on, somebody. It's not just about me joining. I go to that building over there. Amen. The building is not the church. The gathered people are his church. The building is where the church gathers. But you are something more than just associated with 592. 
Main Street or 38 East 1st Street. You are a blood-washed son of the living God. You're a blood-washed daughter of the living God. And the devil would like you to take that so lightly that being a part of a gathered people would mean nothing to you. He would like you to so lightly esteem all of what I just said to you that you would think nothing of what it means to be with some of the best people on God's earth on a Sunday morning or whenever we gather. You would not see that as a privilege that's worth whatever discomfort or awkwardness you need to work through. The devil is a liar. Because if you allow him to put that in you, he's going to steal from you all of what God has provided to make your life fulfilled and satisfied. The connection of community. Access to the power of prayer. Fulfillment from walking in your purpose. And the knowledge that you are a part of something that will never pass away. Come on, clap your hands. Give God glory.